I am back, uh, this time with the learning plan packet for weeks three and four. Uh, so mostly this is going to be an introduction to Annabelle Lee. So I've printed out the whole packet again. You're going to be seeing this packet as a PDF that is downloadable in your files. Uh, this time there are not dates, but you do still have you want to probably keep track of this page. This is just kind of the outline of like what order the lessons come in and what's going to happen in them, but without dates of delivery. Um, so this will be uploaded to files. Uh, there is a part where it goes more in depth to the individual lessons, but honestly, you're probably not going to need to pay attention to that. Then there's a bunch of pages that you've already seen where it outlines how to do first read guides and then hey we're in star-crossed romances and this is you know anyway so i'm going to draw attention to this page because we're starting to hone in on this our essential question is do we determine our own destinies especially like in terms of life and love um so we did not read romeo and juliet together but that is theoretically what you would have done at the beginning of this unit but we just did Popo Catepetl and Estaxiwatl, which kind of started to address this question. And now we're going to be doing one of my all-time favorite poems, Annabelle Lee by Edgar Allan Poe. Edgar Allan Poe is known a lot for his short stories. Uh, he did uh, The Telltale Heart, um, The Black Cat, a lot of Halloween-esque stories. He is basically the originator of what is now the modern goth aesthetic right uh just spooky kind of victorian even though he lived after that period uh and just like really creepy always creepy right uh annabelle lee is one of his most accessible poems he's also famous for his poem the raven which is probably more famous than annabelle lee but i think annabelle lee is a better poem i think the raven is kind of overstuffed too long annabelle lee gets to the point and it does it well so for this uh, introduction, I'm going to actually just read the whole poem, Annabelle Lee, to you, uh, because it's not too long. Um, so the background they give us on Edgar Allan Poe is that uh, Poe's, Poe's worked in literary genres that were not common. Oh. Poe worked in literary genres that were not common at the time, such as stories of the supernatural and fantastical. Many of Poe's narratives imply that the narrator or speaker cannot be relied upon, and may be mistaken about the nature of events. There's a little bit of that in this poem. This guy might have been driven a little crazy by the death of the woman he was in love with, and some of the things he insinuates happened sound a little fantastical. But um, this poem, before I read it, it makes really great use of rhyme, both end rhyme and internal rhyme. It mimics, the. it's set by the sea, and the whole feel of it. It's written mostly as a ballad, but it sometimes breaks ballad rules. But it does it in ways that create this wave-like structure um, as we talk about this, this woman who died uh, by the sea. So I'm going to read this now, and I hope you enjoy it. It was many and many a year ago in a kingdom by the sea that a maiden there lived whom you may know by the name of Annabelle Lee. And this maiden she lived with no other thought than to love and be loved by me. I was a child and she was a child in this kingdom by the sea, but we loved with a love that was more than love, I and my Annabelle Lee, with a love that the winged seraphs of heaven coveted her and me. And this was the reason that long ago in this kingdom by the sea, a wind blew out of a cloud chilling my beautiful Annabelle Lee, so that her high-born kinsmen came and bore her away from me to shut her up in a sepulchre in this kingdom by the sea. The angels, not half so happy in heaven, one envying her and me. Yes, that was the reason, as all men know, in this kingdom by the sea, that the wind came out of the cloud by night, chilling and killing my Annabel Lee. But our love, it was stronger by far than the love of those who were older than we, of many far wiser than we. And neither the angels in heaven above, nor the demons down under the sea, can ever dissever my soul from the soul of the beautiful Annabelle Lee. For the moon never beams without bringing me dreams of the beautiful Annabelle Lee, and the stars never rise, but I feel the bright eyes of the beautiful Annabelle Lee. And so all the night tide I lie down by the side of my darling, my darling, my life and my bride, 
in her sepulchre there by the sea, in her tomb by the sounding sea. So this poem is wild. What he is insinuating, we have to dig into the language a little bit because he uses some uh, what we call archaic language, language that's kind of old and out of fashion, and we don't know what it means as, as easily anymore. So on the first page, there's some uh, some notes at the bottom for some of the words that he uses. Winged seraphs. Winged seraphs are angels. And then coveted is a, it's a want or desire, like old, old school, like Bible, like thou shalt not covet, thou shalt not want what somebody else has. So these angels were jealous of how great his love with Annabelle Lee was. And that is the reason, that's what he says, he says, that is the reason that long ago a chill came out of a cloud by night that killed her, that the angels killed her because she was their love was too good and they were jealous, right? Uh, so then we see their highborn kinsmen came. That means her highborn, her, her, her relatives were like wealthy and landowners and better than him. And so they're like, we're taking her. She's getting buried back in our home. So the author, the guy who's telling us this story, he's like, but our love was too strong. So now I, uh, I lie down like I've gone to where her tomb is and that's where I live now, right? And that's where I'm going to live out my life by, by her sepulcher, her vault or chamber chamber for burial, right? By her, by the sounding sea that she's in this tomb by the sea. Very creepy, right? Kind of that. It, it, this is exactly where you get that, like, uh, uh, what is it? Um, from from uh, Nightmare Before Christmas, the Jack and Sally kind of romance, right? That gothic, goth romance. So um, you're gonna have some comprehension questions, right? Uh, that you should be able to do on your own. They're very straightforward based on the text. You're gonna write a summary of the poem. Um, and then you're gonna do the close read and text questions. So the close read, um, so I think actually before that, you're gonna do a first read guide. So these are the tools we're going to use over and over again. For the first read, what do you notice? You're going to annotate, connect, respond. Okay, so similar to Popoca, Tepetola, and Estoxy Waddle, where there's these uh, other family members who take her away once she's dead, and he's like, no, I'm going to watch over her forever. That's a big connection right there, right? Um, and then uh, as far as what, what we might notice, we notice the rhymes, a lot of internal rhymes, can never dissever my soul from the soul, oh, uh, kind of sing-songy. So that could be what we notice. We notice the technique of how he's written this with all the rhymes of E, 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 but it never gets old because it, there's so many things you can rhyme with E. C, Lee, we, me, very easy. Um, so there's a simplicity, but a beauty and a, and, a, and a lyrical nature to this poem that I think makes it effective at the same time that it tells a story a story of this guy who was in love with this girl they were both young their love was too beautiful the angels killed her they took her away and he went and he lives by the sea by her grave now and like that's it you know um so it starts in this very kind of happy place and ends in this very dark like you know gothic place um so that is the, what we could use for our first read of the text, uh, something that I might pull out as an individual quote would be, um, I don't know, I would do the very end where it, that just slaps, where it's like, for the moon never beams without bringing me dreams of the beautiful Annabelle Lee, and the stars never rise, but I feel the bright eyes of the beautiful Annabelle Lee. We also might want to think about our, our question that we're eventually going to want to answer is, are we in control of our destiny? So what part of this really talks about destiny? Um, I would say... This part, the, the, the second to last paragraph or, or stanza, but our love, it was stronger by far than the love of those who were older than we, of many far wiser than we, and neither the angels in heaven above nor the demons down under the sea can ever dissever my soul from the soul of the beautiful Annabelle Lee. This is a poem that says, screw destiny, our love is bigger and will sustain us even if destiny is against us, right? So that is a uh, that makes a statement on our essential question. So that would be a good thing to grab for our close read, which is our next guide. Close read the text. We're gonna uh, look at what we annotate and say what can we conclude, right? We can conclude 
that uh, he's playing with the ballad style. He's playing with these internal rhymes. He wants it to sound like a wave, like like by the sea. Um, and we see that he's he's painting like destiny is cruel, but love can transcend it. It can rise above destiny. Um, analyze the text. Uh, choice of pattern structure. This is where we can talk about two two things really that they want us to think about. One is that rhyme scheme. The other is direct address. This poem is written, it's addressing you as the reader. Um, that like they're, it's like they're talking directly to us uh, and that has an effect as well. Uh, and we kind of question, like it seems like maybe you've been living with this tomb so long and just living in a graveyard that you have forgotten exactly what happened that killed her and you have equated it to a chill out of a cloud by night that the angels sent because they were jealous um so there is that like can we trust this author so all of that can go into analyze the text any of those kinds of things about authors choices i'd say Another thing we can go back to that we've studied in the past, diction, choice of words. He, these words like sepulcher for tomb, for, for the grave, right? Sepulcher, it has this round kind of sound that fits with the, the wave kind of feel of everything. And it also just sounds so gothic. It's, it's like, you know, I don't know. Um, it's in that, it gives it that extra creepy vibe. Like this is almost a Halloween love poem. Um, so then t pick a paragraph that grabbed your interest. I think I've already talked about several paragraphs, whether just because they slap or because like they are doing something in particular. Um, so then you're going to do some text questions that are, that are sending you a little deeper, right? Um, and that's going to be, uh, it's going to be asking you specifically about like what effect does it have by addressing the, the reader? Uh, what's meant by we loved with a love more than love. Uh, if you have trouble with that, I want you to contact me directly. I'm not going to put this in here. We do want to think about the evidence log. We're going to come back to this again and again, because if we do writing at the end of a unit, we want to be able to already have done the pre-thinking and be able to grab the text without having to go back and reread the whole thing. So you want to put something down here, a, a te two text quotes from this reading that you could use to talk about destiny, right? So I already mentioned kind of one of them. Uh, we love, we, well, um, I think you could do, you could do something about the winged seraphs coveting them, kind of like that love can inspire jealousy and, and like love is by its very nature subject to sabotage just because the world doesn't want to see it for some reason, right? That's relevant. Uh, I think you can do, uh, the part about how the, his love was stronger, right? It's stronger than destiny. Um, I think both of those are very relevant things that you could take down as text evidence. Um, you could also talk about just how, like, expressions of love. We see the way in which he uses rhyme and different, like, elements of poetic expressions to uh, kind of accentuate the idea of his love and describe it in this story, story poem. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any other questions about how to complete the packet materials, at the very end, you're going to have a selection test, which if you're in my class, will be going up on uh, Google Forms, and you will take it that way like you did the previous week if you were already doing distance learning. Uh, I hope you have a great day. Bye!